Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the channel. I am Paul, and today we are going to be taking a look at one of the most controversial and bizarre things to come out of the war in Ukraine. We are taking a look at the Chechen TikTok Battalion. Let's get into it. Yep, they're talking about the Chechen Battalion, which has been nicknamed the TikTok Battalion. And they have in this video a few examples of what they're talking about. <laughs> it says most of the videos give the impression that they are there to have fun and not taking the situation seriously. <laughs> talking about fighting traffic or actions range from fighting traffic lights to okay. So I'll, all right, well let's just keep going. And many people said they're only there to participate in social media propaganda. Uh, let's see, what do we got? This? He's grilling while they're blowing stuff up. And some people claim that they stay behind the front line most of the time and stage their engagements. Guys, if you are familiar with the channel, you know we looked at an earlier video involving uh, purportedly Chechen forces that I thought was almost certainly staged. <laughs> Naked some tea. Okay, I think this is actually just pretty hilarious. Gents, spring is here, and if you're smart, you're preparing for summer already. Updating the wardrobe, working out, eating right, and upgrading your hygiene routine. Lucky for us, Manscaped is here to help. So head over to manscaped.com to get 20% off and free shipping with promo code VET and join the other 4 million men who trust Manscaped. Manscaped has everything you need to upgrade your grooming routine with the Performance Package 4.0. First, it's got the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer. This is designed to give you a nice, clean, below the waist groom, and its ceramic blade skin safe technology reduces cuts and nicks. It's also waterproof, so you can use it right in the shower, and it has an LED light, so you can see exactly what's going on. Next, you can use Manscaped's Weed Whacker. This is a ear and nose hair trimmer that uses the same skin safe technology to ensure that there's no cuts, pulls, or tugs while you're clearing out some of that nose hair. Next, you wanna use Manscaped's Crop Preserver and Crop Reviver. The Crop Preserver is a below the waist deodorant and moisturizer which in the summer months is actually really important especially if you work out the crop reviver is a spray on toner for you know down there so you want to keep uh your stuff from sticking to the side of your leg you know that's the the the, the guy's chronic problem in the summer manscapes got you covered finally you can finish off your grooming routine with the plow 2.0 right that's the perfect razor for your face because you don't want to use the same razor down there that you use on your face, right? And the start of April marks Testicular Cancer Awareness Month. And Manscaped has partnered with the Testicular Cancer Society to raise awareness for testicular cancer, early detection, and men's health. Manscaped is committed to raising awareness for the form of cancer that hit that is most common in men 15 to 35. And they're giving support to the fighters, survivors, and families impacted by testicular cancer as part of their We Save Balls initiative. And definitely go to get 20% off your order and free shipping with promo code VET at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with promo code VET at manscaped. It's time to throw out your old hygiene routine and upgrade your life. And there's them with a goat. Uh, yeah, if you've, uh, yeah, go, so in Muslim culture, right, you can't have pork, it's seen as unclean, um, and so goat is a very common meat, also just because of some of the regions, like the Caucasus or, uh, places, regions of Afghanistan that were more mountainous, uh, goats just tend to survive and thrive in those environments, so it's much easier to raise goats for meat than it is to raise an animal that needs a large pasture like a cow. 
So those cultures have just normalized eating goat a lot more than we have in the West. That said, if you've never had really good goat, you're missing out. But it's got to be slow cooked. It's a tough meat. Okay, so this guy's got an RPG, right? They capture the footage. Okay, right. It's an endologist. However, the Chechen fighters definitely saw combat on the Ukrainian and Russian side of the war. Excuse me. Oh, on Ukrainian and Russian side of the war. Interesting. Yeah, so the reason he threw that was because it's single use. Okay, now I want to talk a little bit, give you guys some context for who are the Chechens, and we're going to take a look at some of these specific videos or some of these specific clips. First off, the Chechen battalions are a battalion out of, well, the semi-autonomous region of Chechnya. As you guys probably know, right, Chechnya is located, uh, it's actually fully ensconced in Russia, but it's in the Caucasus Mountains. And the Chechens are famously resistant to Russian or really anyone's governance. They're very insular, they're very tribal, and in the 90s, they actually fought and at one point defeated the Russian military, uh, earning them a level of autonomy that most other Russian states don't get. Now, with Putin, Putin has understood he did come back, he did seize Chechnya uh, by force, but in order to consolidate his rule, he found a strong man, someone well-connected, a local leader who is uh, pretty famous for being just a bad guy. Um, yeah, Kadriov. And Kadriov is a Putin-aligned strongman who, obviously, there are many Chechens who do not want Russian rule, but Kadriov is sort of the intermediary between Russia and Chechnya, and he has a lot of authority inside the country. So, his battalions, right, his armed forces are almost separate from the Russian armed forces, and they, they in a lot of ways, work for him personally. And for that reason, unlike the Russian armed forces who have struggled to get appropriate equipment, Kadriov has an incentive for his army to be as well equipped as possible. And that's to protect, because his army protects him personally, keeps him in power. And so you see the Chechen fighters often have excellent gear. This is a great example, actually. Let's pull this gentleman up here, right? As you can see, Right, he's got a proper helmet, looks a little dated, comes down a little low, but look at this, a proper plate carrier. You can see it almost, it looks as though his he actually has plates on the front and on the side, right? He's got magazine pouches, he has an individual radio. Uh, this is a guy who is properly equipped for combat, right? We'll back it up, we'll take a look at another person. All right, these guys are not in a combat zone, right? Uh, also not in a combat zone. Let's see if we can find one. Okay, here, these guys. These guys look like they may have been doing some some sort of... Uh, we'll discuss this in a sec, what I think is going on here. But you can see, this is a prop. This is proper gear. These are proper plate carriers, right? This guy's got a helmet. It, all in all, they are uh, properly equipped in a way that we haven't seen Russian light infantry uh, come anywhere close to. Now, the Chechen culture... Uh, and the culture in the Caucasus. I am not an expert, right? But I've read a few books about experiences in Chechnya. Um, also, it, it, you encounter a lot of Chechen and Dagestani uh, mixed martial arts fighters. And that's for a couple of reasons. But for, primarily, it's because in these countries, the warrior mentality, the, the idea that uh, uh, manliness, that bravery and valor is is done through is demonstrated through combat and that can take a couple of forms right uh legendary mma fighter khabib Nurmagomedov is also from the caucuses right uh and he explicitly draws that connection he wears a traditional uh dagestani uh warrior's cap at his weigh-ins and he views himself right in that way as part of this strong caucus warrior tradition and so that's i think a big reason why these guys are being very active on social media is it's it's back home to give them the credibility that they feel they're due as as, as warriors right and i don't put this in quotes and there's a reason it's because the chechen fighters right that we would uh you know they really are 
in combat, right? Now the question is, are there specific videos, combat videos, and do they stage stuff? That's to be determined, right? But all reports have indicated that yes, the Chechen battalions are engaged in fighting. Um, now, there's, for example, the dictator Kadriov, he is actually trying on social media to make it look like he is individually fighting or individually leading this battalion. Um, and there's been some pretty funny uh, posts, one at which he uh, is seen sort of like engaging in prayer um, in a gas station, right? The idea being that, oh, he's he's in such an austere environment, he can't get to a mosque, so he's just going to pray in a gas station. But he doesn't realize that uh, the gas station brand is a Russian brand of gas station that doesn't appear in Ukraine. Uh, and so it was pointed out on social media, right? And he quickly deleted the post. But the uh, Chechens in general are known as being ferocious, ferocious fighters. When I was, obviously, they beat the Russian military, a military several times their size with fully modern equipment. Um, they went toe to toe with them in the second battle of Chechnya, uh, second battle of Grozny in 2000. And only then Russia was able to seize the city with tremendous destruction and tremendous casualties. So the Chechens definitely show up to fight for real when they need to. And the Chechens also uh, fought believe it or not, in Afghanistan. Uh, Afghanistan was sort of a hub for a lot of international Islamic extremists, and the Chechens were definitely there. They showed up, and guess what? The reputation of the Chechens was that they did not play. They would not be scared off by uh, aircraft or automatic weapons fire. Um, they would often routinely fight to the last man. Uh, just showed a level of ferocity and commitment uh, that you didn't often see from a more typical Taliban fighter who was usually a farmer who would take up arms and fight for extra pay when uh, there wasn't a harvest. So the Chechens definitely have a reputation of being strong fighters. Now, the other thing I want to point out is that these guys, I haven't seen any videos that tell me that they're not in combat. And the reality of combat, right, we talk about in the military in the US, we call it hurry up and wait around. And hurry up and wait around is the idea that in military operations, right? The, the periods of intense combat, intense operations are punctuated, or rather intense operations punctuate long periods of downtime. Usually it's because of other aspects of an operation are currently taking place, or maybe preparations are still ongoing. Uh, you have to wait to fuel up the helicopters or wait for another battalion to set in position. Or maybe there are what they call triggers, um, where they say, hey, your battalion isn't going to advance until our, bata our sister battalion um reports that they are bogged down right and then you'll 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 start your attack and so you could sit there and say hey be ready that battalion could get bogged down tonight but it, they end up advancing for days right uh any sort of trigger point like that where the trigger is an event not always a time so that means that in war there's a lot of downtime and you don't have the usual outlets available, Yeah, right? You don't have your video games or your phone or uh, any of that. Obviously, these guys got their phone, but you know what I mean, right? You can't go out and hang out with your friends. Your friends aren't there. Your family isn't there. And so you sort of have to fill this downtime in ways that are weird. And this, for example, this dicking around and wiping out on a motorbike I mean, I wouldn't let my soldiers steal the property of Afghans, but this is different. The whole city is abandoned. And if a whole city was abandoned and there was a dirt bike, yeah, absolutely. Would my soldiers have done something like this? Yeah, I could totally see them doing that, right? Now, I wouldn't, I would be furious if they did it while we were, say, on patrol um, or in an insecure area, but in a secure area, right? Absolutely. Goofing around is something soldiers, we, we did all the time. All right, so yeah, everybody comes over. <laughs> okay, this is another one, right? They talk about shooting traffic lights as though it's some sort of thing. So 
so we routinely would do target practice. Um, we would do target practice first to keep our individual skills sharp. And also we would do it to keep our weapons uh, zero, right? If we had to, for example, do maintenance on a weapon, or maybe we just hadn't fired it in a while, usually once every you know month or two, you would go out to the range and you would check to make sure that, for example, the sight on your scope hadn't shifted, um, that your weapon still worked properly, right? The, and that you, of course, stayed fresh on your individual combat skills. So the idea that they're uh, shooting at traffic lights doesn't really bother me that much. Um, this, again, I, I wouldn't shoot at a traffic light. We actually, on our base, had a secure area that we had turned into a range. Um, it had a secure backstop. We knew that if the rounds went kind of wi like wide, it wouldn't hit anything. Um, and it was a known distance, so we could do our zeroing. But if you were in uh, an environment like this, right, where maybe you just, maybe these three soldiers were issued new weapons after theirs broke, well, you'd want to take it out to the range and just sort of give it a check. And this might be the best bet to do so. So again, I don't, I I'm not going to sit there and be like, oh, these soldiers in a rear area, like th th they're goofing around. It shows they're not in real combat. Nope, this is something we definitely would have done, right? Uh, da, da, da. All right, this is just a guy shooting an automatic weapon. Listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you guys another right. A guys, grilling, grilling. This is a hundred percent a thing that we would do. I mean, look, they've got the bottles of water. This is we would go to Afghan police stations. We've done exactly this actually, like exactly this. We were saying, hey, we're doing a bunch of patrols with the Afghans at their Afghan police station. Uh, so the station is secure, right? We'll have security up. And, uh, but inside the station, right? We would grill out food, right? Between patrols, you know, there's, there's not a lot else to do and we're not gonna patrol for 24 straight hours, right? I mean, that's the Afghans wouldn't tolerate it. So this is the sort of stuff you do. Yeah, we would buy chickens on the local market and grill them up. Sometimes we would, um, yeah, the Afghans would make tea, right? We've even done this. Uh, we bought a goat to have like kind of a, a joint sort of get to know you, uh, Ashura, a sure meeting uh, with some high level Afghan officials. And guess what? Yep, Afghans bought a goat. And uh, these guys are probably going to go slaughter it and uh, put it up to meat, to meat right? Or, or butcher it. Uh, yeah, this here, again, I've, is this the most tactically sound thing? No, but this guy is, I don't know. He hustles out of there like it's real. But again, if it's just proficiency, if it's just, hey, here, take this so you know how to use it, that's fine too. That is a fine way to deal with combat. And here's the other reality, guys. Even if these are totally staged, they're just social media nonsense. U.S. forces did the same thing. Sometimes people, right, you would take photo or video of yourself and all your gear looking cool. Of course, it's going to be done in a rear area. You'd be crazy. I would be furious if my soldiers took cool guy pics in an insecure, in a area that wasn't secure so of course if you want some cool guy picks you're gonna do it somewhere relatively safe relatively secure right where you're not gonna be you know chastised for having your phone out right and we did a lot of unfortunately not unfortunately this is war we did a lot of propaganda work right there was a lot of times where we would usually it was to produce propaganda that made it look like the afghan military was a lot more effective than it was so for example i would donate school supplies that my friends and family had mailed me uh donate it to the afghan kids in their schools um uh, but to get a propaganda victory right it, they decided it wasn't a good look that uh the uh, U.S. forces were individually supplying these schools, but it would be a way better look if the Afghan military was doing it. So we would get a picture with maybe us in the background and them appearing, them distributing the supplies. Was it staged? Of course. The Afghan military d couldn't be asked to do any of these things, but it produced good uh, propaganda photos, right? Messaging or whatever they want to call it. Similarly, almost every photo or video we were instructed to take, and we were instructed to take videos um, to do, again, what's called messaging, um, 
but it's it's propaganda. Uh, we were instructed to do so and always make it look like Afghans and U.S. forces were patrolling in roughly equal numbers, uh, roughly equal an equal share of the operational burden. And so that usually meant that I would get a photo, for example, of a patrol like in the very front, right, where there were three Afghans hanging out talking and two U.S. soldiers in the back. Makes it look like they are not, uh, they are a lot more a larger portion of the combat operation than they were when in fact there would be three afghans and 16 u.s forces was like a typical makeup so again this isn't to say right i've seen i saw other footage that i thought looked clearly staged um and it clearly looked like propaganda um but i can't sit there and judge them and what i can't do is sit there and say oh because you've produced this propaganda it means you're not really in combat um i would be more judgmental honestly of and even now with the era of like the helmet cam right or the body cam um but i i would be more upset if people were screwing around making tiktok videos in actual firefights anyway guys um oh one other request if you've stayed this long till the end of the video hit subscribe i have this dream of getting my channel to 100k right my my wife's been like we should throw a 100k subscriber party i'm like yes i want i want to have a party but uh, so please hit subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything. You, you will, it, honestly, the algorithm will still show you, um, will only show you videos that like similar to ones you've watched, even if you're subbed. Um, but I just want that silver play button back there, man. Anyway, also subscribe to Patreon. I have all sorts of additional fun content on the Patreon, right? Thanks to our Lieutenant tier patrons, uh, Cole Foster, Command Unit, Caffeinated, Jacob Flavius, Chris, Dr. Shadowcock, Porter World, Time, Brandon Armage, Tell Rune, Astro Hunter, Z Joker. Uh, those guys make the channel what it is. And of course, if you want uh, that exclusive content, check it out. Other than that, guys, thanks so much for watching. And um, I'll see you in the next one.